Patrick Sullivan, editor of Port Townsend, Jefferson County Leader. David, I'm the city manager of Port Townsend. Kate Burke, marketing manager of Jefferson Healthcare. Lindsay Garrow, private citizen, but I work at Jefferson Healthcare. I'm Judy Tuck, and I'm a city citizen. Judy Tuck, concerned citizen. just a moment about why planning and creating this community health improvement plan is important. Um, you know, there's, a, there's an old saying that what gets, what gets measured gets done, and throughout this work, our goals, objectives, and strategies, and specific measurement, and measurement that, will, that we will jointly commit to gathering data about that will tell us how we're progressing on our, on our goals and towards our goals. Some easier than others, uh, but the, these are community chosen uh, priorities and uh, strategies. Um, and we do a lot of planning. We do planning as organizations, we do planning as individuals. We plan for land use. We plan for roads and maintenance. We plan for our vacations. We plan for holidays. We plan for parties. And we do, teachers do lesson plannings. Uh, um, school administrators do, uh, do facilities planning, try estimating how many new students they're going to have, how many new kindergartens, etc. And we do this to ensure that the goals of whatever that endeavor is, whatever that responsibility is, that those goals are met and that the things turn out the way we envision them. So there's, it's no different for improving, the, improving our health overall. It does take a plan. Um, and it's not just individual, it's about everybody's health, the population's health. Um, health is impacted by where we live, work, and play. Um, it's, uh, we talk about the health of the community, we talk about health of the economy. They're, these are related to the health of individuals, the health of our families, uh, the health of our income levels, the health of, of our um, uh, quality of life, and, and a lot of different things that we look at that, that really do have an impact on health. Um, relying on the healthcare system alone to keep the community healthy is an unfair and unrealistic burden to impose on the healthcare sector it's a, as one single sector. They are a critical piece of bringing all of the sectors together, looking at how we impact health. You say the same thing for the health department. That would be an unrealistic burden or expectation that the health department could individually as an organization really move the needle on improving health. Um, we know that, for example, we know that income is a top predictor of health. And so, you know, income is not something that, that an individual sector can necessarily by itself impact. But collectively, if we look at some of those social determinants of health, we might be able to recognize that, oh, okay, we, what are the impacts on decisions that get made around economic development that might have an impact on health? Um, 
We know that epidemiologists will tell you that they can tell as much from a person's zip code about their health as they can by looking at their health record. Uh, and that, again, gets back to where do we live, work, and play, and how that impacts our health. So, you know, you can ask, we can ask ourselves, how healthy can an individual or a family be if they can't meet their basic needs or don't have access to nutritious food or places for physical activity? If you suffer from mental illness, you will, on average, live 25 fewer years than your peers in the general population. There are things that can be done about that. Um, you know, if you don't have housing, you don't have health and well-being. Health is more than the absence of disease. Um, a healthy community is more than access to a health care provider, although we want to have that access absolutely available, and we want to make sure that everyone has equitable access to health care services. But we also want to make sure they have equitable access to nutritious food, to uh, living wage jobs, to housing, and to many of the other things that impact health. And I'll just leave you with a definition of health uh, that was adopted by the World Health Organization in 1948, and they have never changed it. And they define health as, health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. And so it's in that context of those broad determinants of health that um, the CHIP, the community, Jefferson County Community Health Improvement Plan, and all of the work of so many people here and so many people who aren't here that got it to where it is today, it's, it, it's within that broad scope that the CHIP is before you today. So I'd like to have John Nowak come up, and he's gonna, he can give you much more of the history. He's been in it from the very beginning. So this has been uh, an interesting journey over the last almost three years that we've been working on this. We started in 2014, and I'm gonna review kind of the basis of this, and there, I think there's some people to recognize and thank along the way. So the initial phase was getting a healthcare assessment done, and I wanna thank Mac, Mike Lynn because basically we were not required by law to do a community health assessment or a community health improvement plan, and Mike realized that it's the right, it was the right thing to do and that we needed to do it, and I think we're all here today because that work started in 2014, and thank you, thank you for doing that. Um, also, I want to thank the Washington Department of Health. They provided a FLEX grant to us to help us do our original community health assessment. And that assessment is what generated a lot of the work that we've been doing over the last few years. Um, Suri Kirshner, who, who works for um, uh, Kitsap County, did our, was the epidemiologist that did the work for us to look through all of the data that was available and there were literally hundreds of data elements that she parsed through and picked out the ones that were the most significant. And she also really helped us to understand the context of those. You know, it's not just looking at graphs or tables, it's really understanding what those mean. So she was incredibly helpful. There was a data prioritization group that looked through all that data, parsed through it and picked what the priorities were and that group did an amazing job. I, want to thank that group. Um, I think it's a bit of a testament to what a good job they did picking priorities, that there's been really absolutely no pushback on the, on the four priorities that were selected by those groups. So really good job by those groups. Um, and then the next phase was uh, we took those four priorities and established subgroups to go out and do, do work on those uh, four items. And thanks to the facilitators and owners for those four groups, they held meetings over basically a year to be able to develop what we call uh, strategic plans for each of those uh, health um, issues in our community. So great work by those folks. And then everyone on the team, and I think several people in this room were probably on one team or another at one time. Actually over 200 people in our community participated in this work at one phase or another. So a huge amount of commitment. And then last of all, the steering committee that took those strategic frameworks 
and develop the plan, the paper plan that you see today. And I think our goal in doing that was to make it really simple and easy to read. We didn't want to put too much information in it, and I think um, we accomplished that goal, but also gave people kind of a guiding document that hopefully will be a, a roadmap moving forward in the next few years for our community. And I think actually for these two boards, I think as you do strategic planning and start to think about where we're going with the community, this will be a helpful document to you as you do that work. So thanks to everybody that participated, and we're really excited to be here today and showing you the, the hard work of our three-year labor. So thanks very much. And I'm introducing you <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> who is going to do a, uh, a PowerPoint presentation that's kind of an overview of the work that we've been doing. And I'm glad to see we finally have a technical problem. Strategic frameworks were developed that are focused on measurable impact. 
All of the frameworks that are um, published on the Jefferson County Public Health website, they have a purpose statement, they have a work group specific purpose statement that's around mental health chemical dependency, access to care, immunizations, and chronic disease prevention. After that, they had goals, objectives, and strategies. And all of those were measurable. We were really, really strict in particular in making sure that everything we did was measurable. If things weren't measurable, we actually ended up often kicking it out because if we can't measure where we are and where we're going, then it's hard to sort of track those metrics. So never forget the data. As a public health person that also does epi, I'm very pro data. So this was really exciting that this community was that invested in making sure things were measurable. These are the goals that were developed for each of the four work groups, and you have this in your packets. Um, but all of them have associated metrics with them, and if they don't, then they refer to an external document that means that it can be measured. How do we stack up? So as I was developing this presentation in my office, I thought it'd be really cool if I could look at some other counties and see how their chips went. We are always in Jefferson County compared to Kip Shop and Clallam. It makes sense, geographically close, we're part of the same kind of community of health, but we're a lot smaller. We often have different demographics, different access issues, and I was like, all right, what if we look outside of just Kip Shop and Clallam? And it turns out the CDC has organized 3,143 counties in the U.S. into peer county groups. They're based on 19 county level variables, and they show places that have similar demographics, geographic spread, poverty, education, housing, income, etc. And these are ours. They're all over. They don't include Kitsap and Clallam. There's 32. And I looked at these chips to see what they had done as our peer counties. Roughly half of them had chips. 18 of the 32 had them. Several of them were done in coordination with surrounding counties or within local hospitals. And it was often that I found the chip actually on the hospital website, not the county public health department website. Most counties had a community health assessment, if not a chip, and so a lot of people were doing the assessments, but not necessarily taking it the next step forward to developing a plan. 100% of peer counties in Wisconsin and Colorado had developed chips. It was actually state mandated that all counties have a community health improvement plan. California had very few, so that was different. And how do we stack up against those? So I chose five randomly from the 18 that had uh, developed their own chips. I looked at the population size served, the year it was completed, and then the number of priorities, goals, objectives, and strategies. These are just five random ones that tried to get a good spread across the United States. We're all roughly in the same year completed. 2014, 2011, Madison, Montana is a little bit earlier than we were. Similar number of priorities, although Custer, Colorado was very focused on their one priority. And the number of goals, objectives, and strategies really varied. They often use different terms, but this was the closest thing that I could get to ours. So it goes all the way from Joe Davies, that only has 10 strategies to meet their objectives and goals, to Washburn, Wisconsin, that has 94 strategies. And then I placed us up against them, and actually we did all. <laughs> there was a lot going on, it was massive. Um, Jefferson County did a ton of work. We have a lot of goals and objectives and a lot of strategies. And one of the things that we also did within our groups is we looked at activities for how to make those strategies happen. We didn't include those numbers because it was just too many to count those, but every single strategy had associated activities. And what did it take for us to get here? A lot of coordination, planning, and enthusiasm. As I said, the groups were data prioritization, stakeholders, and the four work groups. The data prioritization was small. There were 60 members there. Stakeholders was 84. Mental health and chemical dependency, which was chaired by Catherine Robinson, had 36 participants in that work group. That was our biggest work group. Um, very engaged group of individuals. Access to care had 19. Chronic disease had 28. And immunizations had 17. And just from the time that I started at Jefferson County Public Health before I moved to Jefferson Healthcare, there were over 66 hours of meetings with those groups. There was an average number of 20 people at each meeting, which means there was 1,300 hours of work put into the process just to do the strategic frameworks. It doesn't include the stakeholders meeting, all the work that Siri did, 